Um, the roof is on. <laughs> I don't know how to say it again. <laughs> Try it again. So after the garage grade beam was poured, uh, the guys came back and backfilled the garage area with dirt. And then it was time to start building the garage walls and put on the roof trusses. So we actually decided to hire this portion out. Um, our goal was to be at lockup by fall and we just needed more manpower to get it done faster so that we were all closed up and ready for fall and for winter. So here's the next step. So the framers got started today. <clears throat> Man, they got a lot of work done. This will be our garage wall with all the doors. I guess that's the rest of the walls. They have them all pre-built and they just stand them up, nail them together. Pretty awesome. These guys are going to build the roof for me too. It's just way too much for Dad and I to try to tackle ourselves. Plus they've got the right equipment. These uh, telehandlers make the job a lot easier. <laughs> Especially with that little crane attachment. Holy cow, that's awesome. But these are all the roof trusses. <clears throat> They're all engineered, so they hold themselves up. They don't need any interior walls. They're all supported on the exterior walls. This is all the sheathing, all the all the plywood for the roof. Looks like that's all the little tails and all the little end pieces. It's like a big jigsaw puzzle. We got the right guys to put it together though, so should be good. So this is the, uh, the sills that they're going to nail those trusses to. And this is the little beam pocket I built for the beam that's going to go from here over to that garage wall and it'll hold up the roof that comes out over top of the little deck here, or the little uh, front entrance balcony. So we took these and drilled them and bolted them down and sunk the nut to uh, basically level with the, the wood here and then cut off the bolt. That way it's out of the way. Shouldn't, you know, these guys, if a, tr if a truss lands there, shouldn't be a problem. But if we would have left all those bolts up, it could have caused them grief. So if we didn't. Yeah, it's gonna be a big, it's gonna look really, really different here after the next couple of days. There'll be a roof on it, <clears throat> there'll be a garage on it, and these guys are also gonna do the deck. I'm gonna build this whole raised deck here and sheet it in. So there'll be a deck here across all these piles, and we've got our little sunroom out there. So, yeah. It's gonna be pretty awesome. Pretty exciting times right now. It's a big wall though. Holy smokes. So that's that.
Yeah, so here's the roof on the inside. You guys are doing an awesome job. I really like how they're doing the insulation stops. So lots of times, uh, the guys actually sent me these cardboard ones, but uh, Ed kind of talked us out of them. He says if you know if you get a real strong wind, they're just kind of hammer stapled on there. So if you get a real good wind, he could pull them off and then they'll just be flapping around up in there. So he builds them this way, closes them all off, but leaves these spaces every so often for the air to get up into the attic and ventilate correctly. We've also got these high hip trusses here because our windows are up so high. Uh, the roof line wouldn't have really worked if we didn't have this type of truss. They, it actually extends it up a foot right at the edge here and that lets us get that two foot overhang out here without uh, without you didn't get in the way. So these are engineered. They just sit right on the outside walls. There's no load bearing walls in here at all. We could take out like, it's a giant shop if we want it to be. But yeah, you guys are doing an awesome job. So this is what that looks on the outside, those insulation stops. So that's there, you're blown in insulation up in the attic. We're not doing spray foam up there. I just want to do blown in in case we ever want to change something, you know, it's easier to do. But you blow it basically right up against there. And then the air to ventilate the attic will go in that one little space right there. Right up there, through the roof vent, keep everything from getting a condensation buildup up there. It'll all work right. They're doing awesome. Hey, it's weekend again. Lots going on. Doing some trenching today. Gonna get the gas and the power from our meters over to the house. And uh, the roofers have been here all, or the, not the roofers, the framers have been here all week. Got our roof just about done. These guys are awesome. They had the garage stood up in a day basically. And they were working on the roof for three days after that. And it's just about done. They'll be sheeting it in next week. So, lots going on around here. Should be a good day. I'll show you the trench here. I'll show you the, got this really neat little backhoe attachment for the skid steer. You dig some holes with it and should be good. So in our whole yard, there's no services. We brought them in. We brought the gas line over to our pedestal and we brought the power over to our meter. But there are two SaskTel lines, that's our phone company, phone and internet company around here that go across here and here. And you can't just trench across those, you risk cutting them. And if you cut them, you pay to repair them. <laughs> so nobody wants that. So I've kind of been slowly digging this out here, scratch a little bit with the bucket. Then dig with by hand. I'm gonna dig the last foot or so by hand. If I can get down to three feet, I'm good. That's as deep as my trench needs to be. But if I don't find anything and I get three feet down, I'm just gonna call it good. But that's the only things we have to worry about in the whole yard here. Got across a couple of irrigation lines, but that's no big deal. Just a little 69 cent coupling and that's fixed. So that's what we're doing. This will be our power and gas services. Mentioned earlier, they have to be bigger than normal. And uh, yeah, there's our two inch gas line. And we ended up running 500s for our power. Like I thought, you need, uh, electricity is just like water. If you kind of think of it like water, your volts are electrical pressure, like your water pressure. Your amps are like the number of liters of water, like the volume of water that's getting pumped and you're not allowed to have more than 3% voltage drop by the time you get to your house, if your house is loaded up to full load. So 160 amps, 80% of 200, that's what you have to load up to, 200 amp service. So 80% of that is 160 amps. 
at about 450 feet we had to run those 500s and they're way bigger than normal wire but it'll uh, it'll get the job done for us so this is it here made kind of a mess up by the house here had to intersect two trenches because the gas goes one way and that sleeve I left for the power there I'm not going to use it that way now there's a code rule I didn't know about but you're not allowed to run more than 20 feet inside your house with your service conductors or else you have to run it in this rigid conduit it's this thick wall steel stuff that you actually have to thread and twist together so rather than do that I'm going to run it under the footing here take it right up under the pad into the mechanical room over there and that way it saves running all that rigid conduit and saving all that work with that stuff because it's not fun to do I've never ran three inch rigid conduit I imagine it's a nightmare so that's what we're doing so we got all this sand to backfill with um, there's a method you can you can put both surfaces in the same trench if you do it a certain way so we need to put the power in first and then bed it in with 12 inches of sand and then put the gas in then another six inches of sand and then a piece of caution tape and then we could bury it with regular soil so that's going to be today's mission we'll get on it there's our big fat gas line hand for scale and our big fat electrical cables and for scale that's pretty big And they'll end up under the slab, over into the panel, over there. Should work good. So we got the, the electrical cable bedded, bedded in with the sand. <coughs> Excuse me. Not COVID, promise. So the electrical's all bedded in, the gas is on top. We just gotta drop our tracer line in so that the uh, the locators, if they ever need to, they could put a uh, a signal on that line and they could follow it along with their receiver and figure out exactly where and how deep that pipe is. But this is it, it's all the way up to the gas meter. Yeah, so this is that little tracer wire. If we ever need to locate this pipe in the future, the guys will come and they'll connect a little machine that puts a certain frequency signal on there. And then they've got a, a receiver that's tuned to that frequency. And they could tell how deep it is and, and where it is. And we'll be able to find that. You know, the way we did this here, we're going to know where it is forever. It's right in the center of these trees and then it goes straight west over to the house but uh if we ever need to like precisely locate it you know we can but plus it's code so there it is okay power and gas are in that was a long weekend but in about 30 hours over saturday and sunday we get this trench done and backfilled and our gas line in and our power line in and we also ran I ran this one inch uh, sprinkler line over here all the way to the house just you know we had the trench there already so it follows that same trench all the way over and then over to the house and I don't know what we're gonna put in there maybe a camera or power for a gate operator or a light or who knows but all it cost us was the pipe right now stick it in the ground now it's there for us i'll mount it right up on the concrete there on the uh the pedestal we built here you can kind of see a little bit more how this is going to work now see how the, the gas guys brought their stuff in there it goes right through that sleeve and it's protected by that pole ours will be the same thing it'll go through this other sleeve right down there connect up to this two inch gas line so those parts they're on order they're back ordered i don't know when they're going to show up but 
they'll get here soon enough and our power that's how it goes in there so this little switch here we've got a farm service so this little switch here disconnects the meter from the lugs that are inside there where we connect up our wires so you could turn off the whole yard right there but that's our big wires going up into the farm service meter cabinet and that's that Some good progress this week. Our deck is up and our roof is on. It's all closed in. It's pretty exciting. That's gonna be our little three season sunroom. Be all screened in. That's right off. This is into the kitchen here. So that door's into the kitchen. This door is just out into the uncovered portion out here. So yeah. And then inside. Finally, some shade. <laughs> it's been so hot, but it's finally all closed in. And some more exciting news. Today, our windows and doors showed up. So check it out. There's our trailer full of windows and doors. Woo -hoo!